Hi everybody, Michael Prescott here. Today I'm drawing an evil idol, something you might find lining the halls of a creepy temple somewhere. But before we get started, I've got some good news. The Trilemma Adventures Compendium has been nominated for four Emmy Awards. Now I need your help because while the nominations come from a panel of judges, the winners come from you voting. The compendium is up for any in four categories, Best Adventure, Best Cartography, Best Layout and Design, and Product of the Year. So if you're a fan of Trilemma Adventures, consider helping me out. There's a ton of other great stuff you can also vote for, and I'm sure all of the nominees would appreciate your help. I'll put a link in the description, so pause the video, check it out, and vote for the stuff you love. Alright, now back to creepy idols. Okay, the first step as always is to block out the space that the niche is going to occupy. The niche has two semicircles in it and I find it personally really important to sketch out the halfway point so that I know where the top of the arch or the far part of the circle has to be parallel to the uh, to one of the grid lines. And then I'm building up the little pedestal that the statue sits on, which is basically just two stacked circles. When I add the person, I have to remember human proportions. I'm using a simplistic rule, uh, and I do this because the crotch is halfway up, and I always want to put it lower down than that somehow. I always make the head too big, but the head is one-eighth, and the crotch is, is halfway up, and then I build everything from there. So now I'm starting the inking process, and uh, this is just me laying in some, some basic lines, and I tend to start with the nearest stuff first. That's because I can't draw behind anything, so once I get this pedestal done, you can see that I'll start with the the head, and then I'll do the bowl. So this figure is carrying some kind of ceremonial bowl filled with liquid, and I can just uh, sketch in the robe. Everything kind of hangs. Got these big wizard sleeves. You can see me drawing in the wrinkles first, uh, especially around the elbow, just to try and get that sense of fabric hanging, and then down the sides and overlapping the feet and shading in a little bit inside the sleeves to give a bit of sense of depth. Okay, now that I've added the basic lines, I'm starting to thicken up the places with depth changes. So you can see the near side of the niche, and then all around the idol itself, I'm adding a slightly heavier line. And that's just to indicate that there's a depth change. Um, You'll see I'm back to using very fine lines for the texture around the archway, just sketching in some bricks. So then what I want to do is darken up the niche behind, and this is just to make the, the statue have as much contrast as possible. It's dark in there, and you can see I've rotated my canvas. You can just rotate your paper if you're drawing on paper to help it, um, to make it easier anyway for me to draw these curved lines so that uh, we don't give away the sense that it's a 2D drawing with a texture. It's important that those shading lines follow the curvature of the inside of the niche. Now that I've done that, it's time to add some white outlines. So these can look a bit harsh sometimes, but I find them really useful when we're dealing with really small things to just again really emphasize that depth change to make things pop as much as possible. You can see I have ambivalent feelings about the near side of the arch. I decide not to do that, but I do want to go around the idol just to make it really stand out because it's it's really the focal point here and pull it out of the shadows around it. Kind of like miniature painting. If you've ever taken a close look at a nicely painted miniature, some of the highlights are super exaggerated. And that's just because it's such a small thing. You really need that emphasis to, to try and give that sense of depth that you would normally get with the aid of your 3D vision. But these things are just too small. All right, now the hard part's out of the way. It's time just to finish it off with a bunch of little details. I love adding I love adding all these. They're kind of easy, and it makes the space look lived in. It makes the statue look less like a piece of clip art that I got from a uh, from an art pack and something that's integrated into the dungeon, uh, lived in, and all these little textural things that tie it into its environment. I'm darkening up the statue a little bit, I guess, to make it more contrasty. This is just going to be a detail that someone looks at uh, as part of their dungeon. It's not the centerpiece and so because of that I want it to really stand out and let's darken up the niche a little bit behind it again just to make it to really uh, pop out from the wall. And then I guess uh, I love brickwork. Again make sure that the brickwork lines all line up with your grid and you're good and you can just add details and, until you get sick of it. 
That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Remember to vote for Trilemma Adventures at the Ennies. It ends June 12th. Sorry, July 12th. There's only a few more days left, and uh, me and any other independent creator could certainly use your help getting over the finish line. Thanks very much.